Hey, this is Gary Seegers. And this is Chris Giannini. And this is the Winning Cures Everything podcast. Let's go ahead and jump into next season's Memphis Tiger football schedule. Now, we're from the Bluff City. A lot of our listeners are from the Bluff City. Uh, we think they're going to have a pretty good team this year, I think. That's right. Um, they, they've done well under the last two coaches that they've had. Let, let's just jump into this and break down the whole schedule. All right, They open up Thursday, August 31st at home against Louisiana Monroe. Louisiana Monroe is not an awful team. This is not, you know, Division One, Double A, whatever. This is a legit Division One team. I think they're going to have no problem with them. I think they smoke them. I think it's a close game, but I think they're going to win. Yeah. All right. Next up at Central Florida, second game of the year on the road. I don't think Central Florida is quite there yet. I, like I think they're good. I don't think that they've had enough time to build up the talent to be able to compete with Memphis, who is the most experienced team in AAC. So I have Central Florida winning that game. I think Central Florida loses that one. I think it's close. Okay. But Memphis has got the experience. Memphis is the number six most experienced team in all of Division One football. So I think, I think they know how to win on the road. I think they're going to do it there. Next one up, UCLA. I think... It, now, that's at the Liberty Bowl at 11 a.m. Central Time on ABC. I think Memphis pulls out that win. Absolutely. We agree on that. Yeah, I, I think UCLA playing at 9 o'clock local time, 9 a.m. local time. After having to travel cross country. Yes. I, I think, you know, their first road game of the year, I think that is a, a loss for those guys. It is something that messes up professional football players. To yeah. think it wouldn't mess up college kids would be ridiculous. Well, not to mention this will be UCLA's third game in uh, – so Memphis plays their first game on Thursday, August 31st. Mm-hmm. UCLA doesn't play their first game until Sunday, Se- September 3rd. Yeah, September 3rd, yeah. So you've got three games in 13 days. That's a lot on college athletes. So I, I think Memphis pulls that one off. Saturday, September 23rd, Southern Illinois comes to the Liberty Bowl. I've got them winning that ball game. I don't think it'll be close. Same thing. Um, Saturday, September 30th at Georgia State. That's in Atlanta. Georgia State has nowhere near the talent. I don't think they come close in this one. Memphis wins this one. Agreed. Uh, next one up at UConn. Now, it's on a Friday. It, there's no telling what could end up happening. Um, they've got Randy Edsel back at UConn. But I think the talent dropped off so much from when he was there last that I don't think that I don't think UConn can play with Memphis. They don't have the offensive talent to be able to score with them. What do you think? Yeah, I like Memphis. I think Memphis is going to have a really good record. I don't see them losing a lot of these games. See, at I this point, you've you've got them at five and one. I've got them at six and zero. Oh. Yes. Next one up is Saturday, October fourteenth. Navy comes to town. Now, what plays in Memphis's favor is they do get one extra day coming back from UConn. And you're going to need that when you go up against the triple option like this. I don't think Navy's going to be great this year. They, they have exceeded expectations the last two years. I don't think they're going to be great. But I do think that they will have enough to be able to beat Memphis because they have put points on the Tigers and on that defense Every easily year. for the last two years. I, yeah, I got Navy winning. The triple option scares me in the middle of the week. I think... All right, the next one up is Thursday, October 19th um, at Houston. It should be a big game. It's going to be on ESPN. I, I don't believe in Major Applewhite whatsoever. They've got a new quarterback. they got you know new wide receivers and all that. Defense should still be pretty sturdy. I don't think that Applewhite really knows what he's doing. So I agree with that, but I also know this. I've been watching since for the last several years, Houston, Houston beats up on Memphis. They just do. They well, Memphis number. beat them last year. They beat them last year. At the very end of the season when Tom Herman it was, just was gone. Done. All the season before that, Houston plays them well. Well, they, Houston Houston only beat them by one at Houston No, they're two close years ago. games, but they win them. They, they yeah, just but, have but, Memphis' number. But Houston does, like, does kind of pound on them a little bit. Yes. Like they, they're a more physical football team. I, I just I, – and I don't – look, I do not believe in Major Applewhite in any way, shape, form, or fashion. But you think, do believe in the talent that's still there after Yeah, Tom I was Herman. about to say, Houston still has a lot of athletes on that team. I think they're going to win the game. I'm with you. I'm with so you. I think so Memphis I, I, goes on a two-game losing streak. I think Memphis wins that one. Uh, next up, Tulane comes to the Liberty Bowl Friday, October 27th. It's Halloween weekend. Uh, it's a Friday game at home. I think it should be pretty cool. You know, I, I think 
Memphis smokes these dudes. Yeah, they should handle Tulane. They should handle Tulane. Then you've got a Saturday off, Saturday, November 11th, before SMU comes to town. I think SMU will be improved, but you have seen what Memphis has done to SMU the last few years. So, oh my goodness, I am you so skip, sorry. You skipped I completely Tulsa. skipped Tulsa. You skipped I the huge game. <laughs> I sure did. I saw Tulane and Tulsa together. My bad. All right, Friday, November 3rd, they play at Tulsa. I've got that one as a win. Tulsa loses everybody from their team, and they haven't proven to me yet that they are just a system, you know, like a, a Texas Tech, right? I absolutely think they're a Texas Tech. I don't – I mean, obviously – It doesn't matter who the quarterback, who the receivers are. It doesn't matter. They just put up points, and they put them up in bunches, and they have for a while. They, Tulsa did smoke Memphis last year, like doubled them up. Like, what was it, 59 to 30? No, I think it's going to be a lot closer. I yeah, don't I think, think Memphis is going to get blown out. I think Memphis at wins all this, this game. year. Like, I am so high on Memphis this year, you, and it's not, it's not out of bias. I looked at, at all of the, the data and whatnot. I've been reading Phil Steele. I've been looking online, trying to talk myself out of this because it doesn't make any sense. But you have seen this happen before. Western Michigan with 13-0 last year. You know, like you, you've had teams go. Somebody goes yes. undefeated or one And game. normally it is a senior quarterback and a super experienced team that knows what they're doing under a big-time young head coach, offensive-minded head coach. That's not going to be here after that year then. We'll get to that in a minute. Okay. Uh, all right, so I've got them beating Tulsa. You've got, got them losing. losing. All right, next one up. We talked about Saturday, November 11th off. SMU comes to town. I think SMU will be improved. I don't think they will be improved enough to win at the Liberty Bowl. No, not with two weeks to prepare. No, Memphis has smoked them every time they've played them. And they're going to keep doing And they're going to keep doing They're going to keep beating them up. Uh, last game of the year, Saturday, November 25th, rivalry Saturday. This is not a rivalry. East Carolina comes to the Liberty Bowl. You know, I, I don't know what else to tell you. I think Memphis wins this one big. Yeah, they do too. I've got them at 11-1 and one now. I got them 8-4. and four. I think they win the AAC West. Well, yeah, if they go 11 and 1, they win that. And I've got them beating South Florida in the AAC Championship game. I think Memphis is a New Year's 6 team this year. Well, that would do it. That would definitely do it. That would do it. Well, maybe we have to wait and see what the the Big Power 5 do. But well, but it, it no, should it, do you it. you get one one non AQ team, non automatic qualifier automatically gets in. The highest ranked Okay, then they would be the They would be it, because a win over finish, UCLA will go would be a long 12 way. Because that would be 12-1. Mm-hmm. I got them 8-4, and four, and it just depends on what Houston does and if they... Okay, I'm with you. It depends on Apple White and whatnot, if the talent is just too much to... But even even with all that talent under Tom Herman, they still went 8-4 and four last year. Yeah, but he was halfway there. When your head coach has got one foot out the door, yeah, I it's think kind that of difficult. Changes things. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you could see that they were talented enough to beat good teams. They yes. beat Oklahoma like a drum, yes. and they beat Louisville, Louisville to death. Yeah, so so they should have ran the table last year. Should have. They should have. Didn't. And they, yeah, and and when they fell off was when Herman is pretty much checked out. Yeah, nothing you can do about that. As much as I kind of throw disrespect today three months before football starts. It's... I think a lot of this has to do with coaching. Yeah. And well, I don't think that Apple White is a better coach than Norvell or a lot of these guys in the AC. No, I don't either, but I also think they do have a lot of talent. That's really explosive. Yeah. So we'll have to see. I agree with that. So I, I think they will be in the New Year's Six. If he finishes 12-1, and one, he's gone. Norvell's I, gone. I think he takes the Arkansas job, but we'll get into that when we get into the SEC But, but he, even if that job doesn't open up, he's gone somewhere. He will go somewhere because somebody will pay him a power major. power five is going to come give him lots of money. Major money. Memphis is only paying him $1.8 million a year, I think. Could stay in the state. This is Gary Seegers, your co-host and owner of Winning Cures Everything, the best sports blog and podcast in the South. There are a ton of ways that you can connect with us. First, Check out the website, winningcureseverything.com. Second, give us a like on Facebook, facebook.com slash winningcureseverything. Third, follow us on Twitter, at winningcures, or myself, at ProSevereGary, or at Chris B. Giannini. Four, email the show, winningcureseverything at gmail.com. Fifth, download, subscribe to, and review the podcast. You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Tune in, SoundCloud, Google Play, and all of your favorite podcast apps. 
We'll have new shows up every Tuesday and Friday morning along with different articles throughout the week. Remember, winningcureseverything.com.